We'll call the meeting to order in 1805. We'll start off with the uh, ambulance director's report. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, then I better mention every single thing. Um, <laughs> Uh, big scheme of things, FCAT uh, teamed up with us and they produced a great little series uh, that's available on their channel and on their website about South County EMS, what do we do, what type of equipment we have, what our makeup is, some interviews on there, a whole mock call so you can kind of see what it's like to ride along on the ambulance. So that's, that's exciting um, and the spirit of outreach as well, Saturday, June 11th. 10.30 a.m. to 12.30 uh, will be Sunderland Touch a Truck event at the Sunderland Public Library. So police will be there, fire will be there, South County EMS will be there, we'll have some personnel there, and I guess there's a special guest of a police canine dog. So anybody in the community, bring your family, bring your friends, your kids, your cameras, and uh, it'll be a great opportunity to meet these emergency responders in an environment that's friendly and relaxed and not hectic so that's uh that's great um and we've had a couple high profile calls recently um one of them was just yesterday with a single car accident in waitley four people in the car uh all requiring um different levels of care but we south county ems ultimately responded with all three ambulances two at the paramedic level one at the intermediate level and all four people were transported to the hospital one um, was stabilized by our crew uh, and then they coordinated with Life Flight out of Worcester to get the patient to Bay State uh, more quickly because that patient um, actually took some time cutting him out of the car. So uh, they used the helicopter for him and another victim was removed from the car immediately so our other paramedic crew brought him straight to Bay State themselves. So uh, that was uh, in the newspaper and... Uh, How much quicker was the Life Flight? And you guys showing up at Bay State? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't have the actual arrival at Bay State times to compare. Typically, where we are in Southern Franklin County, if somebody needs to go to Bay State, if there's nothing involved about getting them into the ambulance, it's faster to drive. Um, but if there's any sort of extrication involved, out of, out of a car, out of the woods, anything like that, what we'll do is if we can land the helicopter right about the time we're freeing the person. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. I'm just curious about this call. How it, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm, I'd have to do some digging, but I can find out when, when life like got there. That, that's, that would be, be interesting interested. to see. Let me know. Yeah. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, and we also had another uh, significant car accident in Deerfield, uh, like last week. It was a school transport van, a car turning into Richardson's turned right in front of him. So. We, uh, we responded with two ambulances right away. Our impact shift was on duty then as well. Um, and we transported two adults in separate ambulances and then also had additional EMS personnel on scene who cared for the children in the van uh, until their parents arrived. The kids were all fine. And we staffed the third ambulance during that time as well with extra EMS personnel. So we still had an ambulance available with a crew in case something else came in. Nothing did, but, uh, but we had that available. Our uh, upgrading paramedics uh, have been appointed. Their precepting is happening now. They're working one on one uh, with mentors, riding third right now, and then they'll be um, by themselves with a mentor, and then they'll be cut loose without restriction. And uh, to help facilitate all that, we've reworked the schedules and the shift assignments to prepare those people to be working with the same person for continuity. Uh, also, in anticipation of the new full-time hire, April Fernandez, and uh, she's been appointed, and her pay rate was recommended by the personnel committee in Deerfield, and we expect her official start date will be first week in June uh, at this point. And let's see, I uh, mentioned that. So I guess the last stuff is uh, administration stuff. We signed, uh, a, we had to renew our intercept agreement with Medicare Emergency Health in the past, they were the paramedics who came down and intercepted us, so we had an agreement to go that way. Now, because we're paramedics, they need us to intercept them. Um, they have a lot of calls, they don't always have the crews available, and sometimes they pull 
um, EMT basics, like at a dispatch or something. So we signed a reciprocal agreement with them so we can provide intercepts for them to take care of uh, their patients. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this does obviously open up revenue opportunities for us, um, but all of our staff has been trained and we actually have pol policies already in place from our SOPs that are clear that we're only available for intercepts if we're not uh, diminishing our ability to uh, serve our calls in this area. So kind of the impetus of that was this impact shift. Now that we have the additional crews available, we can still assure that we're gonna have um, one paramedic truck available for Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley, so we can then uh, provide these intercepts for the other patients. Also, uh, Deerfield Academy has started reaching out to us to do EMS standby services. In the past years, they hired private companies to come down, do their commencement weekend, their reunion weekend. Um, they prefer to use us. We've got a good reputation, and they're happy to uh, reach out to us that now that we can do that type of thing. So we've actually scheduled personnel for commencement weekend and are working alongside um, their security and the police department to uh, provide services there, and we're staffing their reunion weekend. Also, uh, opportunity for more revenue, community outreach, and the, those standbys as well as the touch of truck is all A3. So those are all additional crews um, that are um, available staffing the third ambulance, so we still maintain A1 and A2 in service for 911 calls. So. Those are, uh, I think that's it. Any questions about that for a sec? Uh, the second ambulance, is it housed in the Deerfield? Sunderland. The impact shift? Well, the, typically what happens is the second ambulance, when it's being staffed by the impact shift, is brought to the South Deerfield Fire Station. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I got one comment that might. I got a call from somebody that was uh, interested in being an EMT or starting to work for you folks, and he did his due diligence in researching area ambulance services. Mm -hmm. And according to his findings, um, there was one outfit, I think, out of Springfield, maybe the one you just partnered with, that was rated number one in South County EM. This is rated number two best in the state, I think, or area. Yeah. So. Congratulations. I, I have no idea who's rating it, but that's great to hear. That's, yeah. a, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Beautiful. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> cool. uh, under old business, do we want to talk about how the progress is going on uh, the RFP we sent out? Do we know any information, Mr. Finn? Uh, the RFP has been issued. Uh, the RFP has been issued. Uh, it's been out for I think a couple of weeks. The deadline is June 3rd. There is uh, one amendment that has been issued and that amendment is available both through the town by request on our website as well as it has been delivered to all the people who have previously received the main RFP. Uh, the amendment corrects a typographical error in the summary paragraph, the first page. It also removes mention of South Deerfield Village from the criteria, the scaling criteria. Um, instead, it replaces it with a term, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, uh, the cent center of the service area. <clears throat> if you look at a map, it's the same area. But the concerns we heard, were, it's slightly different words. The concerns we heard were that the the use of the name of the town uh, would lead someone to believe that it must be in that town and we did not want to leave that impression. Um, there we are. June 3rd. Um, to that end, I understand that there's a great deal of concern about exactly what's going to happen after that point. Um, I'm going to strongly recommend that uh, with the RFP being due on June 3rd at 2 p.m., if at all possible, I would like to be able to have the Board of Oversight, you guys, open the responses, evaluate the responses, <clears throat> make a choice, have a recommendation, and deliver that recommendation to the, um, the, board, uh, the select board for Deerfield as quickly as possible so they can then vote that recommendation and we can put this business behind us. I don't know how soon you'd like to schedule a meeting for. 
it's certainly up to you folks. What day of the week is June third? It's a Friday. Friday. So it's also the day. Of, day. It's also the day of Frontier graduation, which is a yeah. Um, graduation week. Yeah. So if we schedule the meeting the no. following week, when is their selectmen's meeting? Nowadays, Wednesdays. Wednesday. If there's any way you could do it on the sixth or the seventh, that would be great. There is a town meeting in Deerfield slated for June sixth. Um, not that that means one thing to most folks here, but. All right. we'll talk about yes, Mr. Mr. Chair, I, I would recommend that our building committee, we have a building committee that they review the, uh, and, and I'm saying they, they may need to go out and view the sites also. We we don't necessarily know what sites are going to be. Throw around us. Yeah, so I, I would say maybe the building committee should get together and, and uh, if they need to go to visit the, the locations. And, okay. and they would bring a recommendation back to the full board? Personally, I'm a little disappointed how this whole thing came about. I mean, a member of this board recommended coming up with this RFP, and then it all just went to Deerfield. It didn't come back to this board before it went out. I would have thought that we would have had a chance to review it before it went out, but that didn't happen. It just seems like we're, this board is kind of losing our perspective of what we're set up to do. That's what I'm concerned about. Well, I, I agree with you. I, I think that it could have been better coordinated, but we were pushing really hard to get it as quickly as possible off the door. And since it was an example that came from... Well, in the beginning, they were trying to push it to get it before town meetings, but then it went beyond that, so... That kind of probably got shot out the window, so you probably could have backed off, and but I still, I mean, I, I was in a different position at that time, and my recommendation was to to uh, have a few people review it, and I, my understanding was there were a few people on this board that reviewed it. I personally was not one of them, um, but it was just a follow up of something that was given to the board as an example that was just cookie cutter type of thing. Um, if there's any issues with it, we can always backtrack. But I think it was done, a, a good job was done. And, and, um, we got, in the manner and I think we have a lot to learn, or at least <laughs> still of, are learning how to move forward with the, with the process. And I, I think that <coughs> the reality is that um, I don't know of anything that's been identified other than the typographical error that was part of the process, but uh, if there's anything else, we always have the right to reject and start over again. I have a question on uh, the 120 days. How did that, how was that decided that that was the time needed and do you actually think it's going to take that long to make a decision? That's not an outside limit, that's an inside limit. Um, the, in other words, when a, a respondent makes an offer, the offer has to be good for 120 days. Um, in the same way that when you get a, a quote from somebody for work on a project, they will say this quote is good for 30 days, after which right. we may have to reassess because materials cost to change, that kind of thing. The 120 day limit is designed so that if a respondent makes an offer and says, we will give this to you at this rent for this term, they have to stick with those terms for at least a 120 day period. The expectation is not that it's gonna take that long to make a decision. The expectation is just that's there as a protection for the for the issuer of the RFP, for you folks. Well, you're Does that make sense? The rent is, is good for the 120 days or the or The, the terms of is... the offer need to be good for at least that 120 days. In other words, if this board fails to make a decision on on uh, by day 121 then the response is therefore deemed no longer valid and the person who responded doesn't is not bound by those terms anymore okay cuz i guess some people are viewing that as whoever submits a proposal can't do anything for 120 days you can't change the proposal no 
That's all it means, is that they can't change their proposal. You can't change well, his proposal or the offer. I, I, it could be two different, could be two different <coughs> things. The people that are proposing, the, uh, who are responding to the RFP, yeah. have to keep it the same for 120 days, is all, all it means. It has nothing to do with how long it would take this board to, to review it and move forward. It's just that they have to live by, abide by, what they quoted to this board as part of the RFP for 120 days. Okay, so you're talking the proposal and the the uh, the terms of the proposal, and yes. the offer. Okay. Yeah. Did they have a problem, Chris? <clears throat> well, as you know, keep hearing that we're look. We have other options. Then you have you have to do what's best for you and your facility. Right. You don't worry about South County EMS. Well, that, you, you worry. You worry about what's best for the town of Whiteley as a selectman. That's your. That's your job. That's our. our Absolutely. Our puzzle is a hundred or twenty days. I, I guess. Is. Well, <laughs> um, I don't mean to interject here, but I did have a conversation with Mark Prohensky earlier this yeah. week, um, and <laughs> did he did he talk to you since that meeting since Tuesday? Not about this, but okay. Um, uh, it was a meeting with the town administrators from the three towns plus uh, the superintendent of schools and we talked about a number of things and of course one of the things was the need for the Frontier Regional to get out of the space they're in and the fact that they're looking at the Waitley office building as a potential home um, and I turned to Mark and I asked is there's not enough room for both to fit in this building at once and he said no and I asked how much are you short in terms of space he said about a thousand square feet and I said, I turned to Marty Barrett, I asked, how much do you think you're going to need? And she said, probably about 3,000 square feet, rough, rough estimates. And I said, can you shave a few hundred square feet off of that? She said, I don't know, maybe I'll look. And I asked Mark how much space he was reserving for EMS in, in, in that plan. And he said, probably about 1,500 square feet. And I said, does that include the garages? And he says, no, that's in addition to the garages. And I said, don't you think you could figure out a way to trim a few hundred square feet off of that? My point being that I don't think that the one is exclusionary to the other. I think there's a possibility to create a proposal from Waitley for the EMS that doesn't prohibit Frontier from also taking occupancy in that building. I asked that same question and I was told that that would put the school administration offices in the center of the building where they wouldn't have any window access or anything. Um, that's assuming that the EMS would have uh, would continue to have the offices along their north wall. Right. It may need to take some redesigning, um, but instead of having the EMS against that north wall, if instead the EMS was against the wall where the garage is, then there may be some options. So, but I, I don't want to you know describe you know what weight we should or shouldn't do, but I think it's worth exploring. Well, if we haven't made a decision or, or discussed that. Okay proposal yet but is uh, is the ambulance service here looking at reducing their square footage then? I don't think we can. <laughs> you mentioned well see, see this, mentioned is, Mark, this is the thing Mark that said that both are looking at reducing was well, that happening here then are you looking at that or well that's this is the thing about the RFP it's not about the ambulance saying we want this it's about Waitley <clears throat> saying we can offer this right Lake Whaley, I mean, uh, Skems was more concerned about future growth. We we're already taking a, a limited amount of space, and I think to try to cut that down, I mean, I can't speak for Zach, but. Um, right. <coughs> From my perspective, the 1,500 square feet of office space and what that represents is like a minimum of what we need to <coughs> operate. Um, but right, the point was Whitley could return with whatever offer they could make it. You know, but that's that's what we're looking at still. I don't have any plans of um, trying to shave off that. But well, that's for existing space, not nothing for future. Right. Future growth. Okay. If anybody has any suggestions on layouts and stuff, as you know, I got all of the data for that building on the program and I can make changes fairly easily so we can throw some ideas around and hopefully make everything work for everybody. 
Sounds good to me. Yeah. Good question. How many, how many um, firms or companies have taken out the RFP? Um, two, three, four, five, seven, I believe. We proactively sent it out to three local real estate agents uh, within the three towns. Um, we received a request from Jane Treger. We received a request from Bob Decker. And we received a request from Waitley. Uh, Waitley actually received a copy proactively. Um, and we received a request from um, Habitat, Post and Beam. So a total of seven firms so far. Can we go back to the uh, recommendation of Tom says to having the building committee do the... Um, you still want to be on that? I would, like, I would be honored to. So it's you, Gary, and me. Right. Everybody and else is welcome to come. But. And Zach. And me. Okay. I'm very comfortable with those three. I, four. Four. Same. Yeah. I, I, I'm very comfortable. Those are... They ran our ambulance system, so Bobby and Gary I have no problem with that at all. If I make a motion. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Tom, you uh, give us some more paperwork to read over? Well, what, what I received um, actually just came to the selectman's office and it's it's um, I, and I don't know if you guys know, um, but Deerfield had requested Deerfield Selectman had requested a meeting with the two other boards. Doug, is that how I understand it? I, I don't know that it was Deerfield uh, that originated the request, but um, I want to say it was coming from Waitley. I For month, this Monday night? Yeah. Okay. And okay, <coughs> didn't did Whiteley? Okay, because I thought I because I saw the email from you. So that's yeah. All right. So that's in the, Sunderland, right? Huh? Right. It's going to be in Sunderland. Yeah. Just office. because that's a normal meeting night for us. Oh. So there's going to be a meeting Monday night, six o'clock, in Sunderland, and we're going to talk about South County EMS um, housing, mm -hmm. the RFP, and the mm -hmm. I am. Um, a came from the IMA is probably going to be only briefly touched on where we didn't want to put too much into the agenda okay. for that night so so this is this is so if, if we when you look at if you this is the IM, IMA original IMA and somebody's gone through it and has uh, added notes to it about changes it, and it looks like to me the biggest changes are they're eliminating we had put in the in the original IMF IMA. We had put in the words um, the town of Deerfield or to such, and they're just a lot of that is eliminating the word town of Deerfield and adding um, this, the fiscal agent, I believe. So for the most part, but take a chance to read it, and and they're also the other big thing I see in here was it's looking for the fiscal agents representative representative on the board to become a voting member so that's that's on that's in here so i just so i copied it today so you guys have a chance to take a look at it read it over and if you if you you know i i'd appreciate if you come to the meeting monday night if you can make it to the meeting i know it's short notice for everybody but if you can make it to the meeting i appreciate you to come Any other business for this evening? We all made it through the town meetings. Everybody was happy. Budget went down. I, I just, <coughs> I just want to, I just want to, uh, I just want to just thank Matt Russo for, for taking the courage to stand up on town meeting floor and saying what he did. I, I, uh, I again, I've said it before in this these meetings, and I, I just had a lot of respect for. I saw, I saw the meeting and. There was some information I believe that was it, it was incorrect, and Matt was um, trying to correct that information. I just like to thank him and and Mark for 
um, trying to set the record straight. And unfortunate that we haven't been able to set the record straight, but um, I, I don't know how to do it either, to tell you the truth. So I, I don't know. Do you do you keep beating a, you keep beating that dead horse, or do you move on? I I just hate the fact that whoever yells loudest wins, and that's that's one of the things I'm seeing right now. And, I, I don't know if that person needs to have continued airplay right now. Uh, I agree. As you pointed out, I think that the service is doing a phenomenal job and basically it's going to win out with the fact that they're being recognized for being one of the better services in the local area. The fact that we have a lot of issues um, that are positive and the things that are going on, I, I think that um, as hard as it is to kind of let that stuff pass. I think it's more important that we stay focused on how well we're doing, the good things that we can do to make it better, and just continue to plot forward with it because the, the raising your voices doesn't help anybody or prove anything or serve any processes. So just keep keep the course and I think we'll be fine. I, I have no doubts that this organization is going to find its way. It's, uh, I, I couldn't have believed three years ago that it would be running this movie in such a short period of time. And uh, so <coughs> I hope everybody can have cooler heads prevail and just let's get through it. And, um, and I'd like to apologize for <coughs> anything I might have stirred the pot with. So. The, the other thing, Mr. Chair, if I could, um, I know when we first started the when we first started talking about the board of oversight and how it works, one one of the things was that we are adamant that our director not be subjected to um, stuff, and I I would hope going forward that we can re redouble our efforts um, to make sure that our director is not in the line of fire, um, so to say. I, I, I think he has a t I think he has a tough enough job without becoming embroiled in, in the politics. So I, I would strongly I would strongly suggest Zach if that if you feel that happening, please talk to the chair as soon as possible so that we can um, step in it goes out saying that you you're it may you it may happen, but we our goal has always been, and I think Randy, Gary, myself, Mark, Bobby, um, Matt, always wanted, whoever was the director, we always wanted to isolate that person from, and, and that we were always supposed to be the, the, if something was to happen, we were the ones that were supposed to take the, the brunt of that. So I just want to, hopefully we'll redouble our efforts. The other thing is, I, I one of the, the concerns is the financial aspect. Um, I, I am going to continue to um, ask the uh, COG to uh, do a study of, of the finances of the uh, South County EMS. Um, I think they have monies available to do that. So, and I, I would hope the, the board would would uh, want to see that happen as well. It, it should help us in that respect. And maybe, Zach, if you could, um, we're paying a, a a sizable fee to the town of Deerfield as a fiscal agent, and, and I, I'm requesting now that we get a financial statement monthly from the town um, with our line items, so exactly where we are, so we can follow it. I I do I do have regular reports okay. provided to me, so I'll make sure that's good. Could could you please include yeah. them so that we can <clears throat> we can say so we, we can say current. Absolutely. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Any other business tonight? Going once. Going twice. Sorry. <laughs> on, the, on the agenda, there's an item called capital request. Oh, yeah. Uh, Did we do anything with that? Uh, sorry. Skin <coughs> right. Not. You're right. Yeah. Um, John Koreski. Am I pronouncing his last name correctly? from the Deerfield Capital Improvement Committee uh, came to me yes. uh, at the end of last week and said that he's under pressure to get a five-year projection on capital expenses for the town of Deerfield. 
and wanted um, just a ballpark idea about what we were anticipating. And I was really explicit that we don't have a formalized capital improvement plan um, yet, and he understood that. Uh, but I did provide him with some figures as far as the um, the replacement ambulance seed money every year and some anticipated expenses. We've got OEMS is going to be mandating medication pumps on the ambulances, so I've got a ballpark figure for that, and we would need three of them. Um, so things things of that nature. So I provided him with those numbers. Again, really explicit. It was just a draft, but he was very thankful for that and, and just needed kind of some place to start off from. Um, Deerfield's uh, financial requirements are that, every, that they will review a five-year plan for capital. And I think that um, Deerfield is, uh, is good to get that under their belt, but the aspect of the next stage of that is having a capital stabilization or a reserve account to make sure that you can meet that as those five years go through, which we're doing because we scheduled the ambulances out of the five years, which is our, use, our biggest capital block process. So we've already got a good stake in the ground, but I think it's good for us to follow their model to continue to, to uh, think in that sense so that basically we're looking five years out and we're putting money aside for even the unknown things that may be short, be it uh, the state of Massachusetts and it gives it wisdom asking us how we're yellow sneakers on Thursdays, um, whatever it is, we should be prepared for it. So. And that would go along with the uh, plan that Mark Abrams and us kind of set up for his talk. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing that up. Zach had emailed me a couple days before the meeting. That's why I put it on there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think John felt a little under pressure last minute. and. Uh, but yeah, we basically it was discovered that we had to block some of our articles out of our annual town meeting because we did not comply with our own bylaws and until we had that meeting, that um, public hearing on the five-year plan, we couldn't move forward on sending any capital money. Uh, so that's why we're out where we're at. So uh, it was a good catch on the person that identified it. Uh, I think the town would have been a whole lot better off if somebody had identified it before we got to annual town meeting. So, um, and you know, the <coughs> timing uh, makes you ask a couple of questions, but the reality of it is it was a good catch, and it's better us doing it that way than finding out that we ethically did something wrong. Okay. Entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Second. Moving adjourned. <coughs> Short and sweet.